All right, welcome to Head Kick Audio. I got a very special guest for you. I got Patrick Two Quick training out of Baker's MMA, competing at rough 54 against Abernathy at 135 pounds. Now, look, I've been in Baker's. We just we've missed each other uh, during my travels there. Um, but I know I know the guys over at Baker's very well. Uh, you got Loya, who's an outstanding striker. You got uh, Verms, who's an outstanding grappler. You got Barcenas, who's just a machine. So talk to me about the training camp uh, for this one. Well, yeah, that's that's the awesome thing about uh, our group is uh, we we have like the dynamics of everything. We have a super great grappler who's you know constantly teaching us uh, Austin. Uh, and he's, you know, always moving through and creatively doing things that are always keeping us on our toes. Uh, Enrique has an, a tank that is bottomless and his, his wrestling, it might not seem like it when you're watching it, but if you wrestle against him, that boy is heavy. He knows how to load his weight. So it's like, we get the best of both ground worlds there. And then, you know, you have people like me and uh, Aaron Loya who have just crazy unique uh, stand up fighting styles. So it's like, you know, when you're on our fight team, you, you get the best of all the worlds, you know. So it's a great place for training. All right. Uh, what do we know about Abernathy? What do we got to keep an eye on? Uh, Abernathy, I feel like he's a stand-up striker. So, honestly, uh, this is uh, the fight I've been looking for my uh, whole amateur MMA career. I, I really want to test my stand-up skills against somebody that thinks that they're a stand-up striker, you know. And, uh you know, I, I show nothing but love and respect for anybody that enters the cage. So it's, it's not, you know, talking any kind of trash. Yeah, exactly. That's me. You know, I, I, I want to come in the game humble and leave humble. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm expecting this to be a stand up bout. I'm expecting my stand up to be better than his. And I'm sure he's expecting the same thing. So uh, uh, hopefully we'll see ourselves a knockout one way or the other. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. 100%. I think this is a fan fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, 100%. This is the one that the fans are thoroughly going that, to enjoy. Yeah. We will, we will get everybody on their feet. That's for sure. Okay. Now I, I know you've uh, yet to not to win in MMA. So obviously that's, that's goal. Number one, I spoke to a fighter uh, over the weekend about mm. his fight career and he had yet to uh, not to win. And he says, look, I don't really give a shit about anything else right now. I am thirsty for a W. And that's the first time that I've put that way. Do you think that your your mentality is the same way? Or are we just, you know, getting all this, you know, experience out of the way before we go pro? Yeah. You know, I'm, my goal is to go pro before I'm 30. I'm 28 years old, uh, freshly. So January. And uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, thank you, my man. Uh, so the way I see it is, you know, I had almost 36 minutes of octagon time already. I've taken very minimal damage. Almost all of my fights, I I didn't even have a bruise. My first one, I, uh, I had a little damage, but, you know, it was the first rodeo. Uh, but other than that, you know, I've gotten out uh, uninjured and, you know, unscathed in my opinion. So to me, is is all great experience. If, you know, you want to analyze things like, you know, a general you know, internet fan and say, oh, he's got four losses. You know, how many significant strikes did I take during those four losses? And was it a boring fight? You know, that's that's what I want. I want to I want to put on a show. I want to, you know, try to display, display my skills, showing how I'm growing. And as long as I can do that, you know, I won. And then, you know, you know, uh, so you've seen all my fights. Uh, every fight, I have to kick someone in the head. You know, that's 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 one of my goals. Exactly. I, I need a head kick. So, uh, you know, I, I hit those little triggers, those little goals that I set for myself. And, you know, it's a win in my eyes. I'm 4-0. Oh. Well, let me tell you this. The, the way that fighters approach you in the cage speaks volumes to your striking, right? These guys generally... You know, I, I've talked to a lot of them beforehand and they're like, look, I really want to strike with this guy because I know he's got good striking. And then after the fight, they're like, man, I really wanted to show more striking. But, you know, he's <laughs> long and he knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? Yeah, so you right. even get props uh, from the guys that hold victories over you. You know what I mean? Yeah. They know that you're dangerous on the feet um, and you are. What are you doing, girl? 
and you are uh, very, very tall for the division. So, I mean, it's it, it's like you said. I mean, have you really lost? Yes, maybe uh, on the official, you know, record, it says that there's losses there. But a lot of these guys are genuinely, like, checking that box. Like, nah, man, like, I didn't like what I was seeing on the feed, so I had to go to my wrestling. Yeah. And honestly, yeah, it's just like I've done stand-up since I was in second grade. So it's like that that part comes to me. But uh, the the jujitsu, the wrestling, all that stuff, it's like I've been working on it. So it's like for me, I just want to come into the next fight better than I was in the last. And it's been over a year since my last fight. So you know there's going to be an improvement there. So if, if he wants to try to take it through the ground, I feel like uh, I've developed myself, you know, into a better, you know, fighter to where I can keep it where I want it. So hopefully that goes as planned. Well, and then, uh, so let, let's, let's back it up here. You said you've been uh, a stand up, you know, striking uh, since you were in second grade. So what is the history of quick? All right. So second grade, uh, we started with uh Tong Sado, uh, martial arts, uh, uh, actually a gym off of uh, 59th and Camelback still there. Uh, honestly, my, my uh, dad went there too, as a kid. So he it's, it's been a gym that's been, you know, it, it says a lot about a karate gym that can stay around for, you know, three, four, five decades even, you know? So they've always been there. It's Khalid's martial arts. Um, I did that for about eight years. And, uh, after that, I got my first taste of, uh, some kickboxing. I entered a kickboxing fight and, uh, you know, obviously from karate to Muay Thai, they're, they're, going to be basic little holes that they're going to pick in their world and you know i found those and i was like I, I after eight years of training i felt defeated being beat by something as simple as a leg kick or you know maybe we we weren't training with full power full contact and you know then i'm getting hit so it's like you know i i, I entered a fight uh you know got my butt handed to me but you know humbling loss and then uh, i started doing kickboxing after that uh about four years of kickboxing uh, traveling from gym to gym, I probably went to like five or six gyms for Muay Thai. Uh, so that's probably, uh, the root of my stance. <laughs> and then, uh, that's actually where I met Glenn Baker. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I took a little break, uh, COVID hit. And then I, uh, you know, I felt like I've done all this training. I would be, uh, so, you know, disappointed in myself later in life if I didn't, you know, try to combine it and, uh, you know, get something going in the MMA world. So that's when I set that uh, 30 year goal for myself. And uh, Glenn was he was, uh, you know, getting his gym up and running from his garage. And then he uh, sent me a message. And I was like, yeah, you know what, if you get a gym, I'll come and train with you. And I was there day one and I've been there ever since. Well, and Glenn Baker is one of the nicest guys in the oh, game. Yeah. He really is one of the nicest guys. Don't let his nice, uh, his niceness fool oh, you. I've seen all, all sides of his spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> well, as one of his students, I imagine yeah. so. But you see, I only see, you know, the pearly whites and the big old oh, smile. You know crazy. what I mean? But yeah. at the same time, you know that it's all from a genuine place. Exactly. Uh, a, a good coach is going to be hard on you when he needs to be hard on you, and he's going to be soft on you when he needs to be soft on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and, and Glenn really is one of the better coaches out there, at least in my opinion. Uh, I really like the guy a lot, and I like Bakers. I like Bakers. I think you guys got some really good fighters going on over there, and, uh, you know, your time is coming for sure. So, how does the family feel? I mean, obviously you've been doing, you know, some form of martial arts since you were a kid, but how do they, how did they react when you said, Hey, I'm going to do this MMA stuff? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, my full, my whole family, they honestly, I, uh, you know, they, they support me. They do. They support me so well, you know, with, uh, I have, uh, three children. So, uh, you know, just getting to gym, you know, on time and making sure that all my classes are, you know, being hit, working full time, two jobs, uh, doing all that, you know, it, it takes a good support line. So my family definitely helps me out. But I, I know in the back of their heads, they're on the edge of their seat the whole time. They're wishing that I would just, you know, throw a head kick that lands perfectly and it ends in a second, you know. <laughs> but, you know, and it can't always be that easy. But, uh, yeah, I know they're uh, at the edge of their seats the whole time for sure. But well, uh, at the same time, too, uh, my uh, – my girlfriend, uh, she, uh, and mother of all of my children, uh, she uh, definitely uh, likes the excitement factor. Like she sees that I'm good and that, you know, like I, uh, I, uh, I go out there and put on a show. But, you know, at the same time, you know, I, I'm sure it gives anxiety 
unknown levels. <laughs> well, uh, the supportive wives will definitely, uh, like they'll be there, but in their mind, all they're thinking about is please don't fucking die. You know <laughs> Do you not know? get knocked out. <laughs> I just please don't die. And it's like, yeah. look, we have one of the best commissions in the game. The referees really know what they're doing anywhere in this state, regardless of what promotion you're in. These guys really take care of their fighters. I saw a kid yeah. last week because I blew up and they're like, no, he's not going back out. It's it's yeah. done. And he's like, no, I can see. Not worth it. See. <laughs> yeah, we're you know? amateurs, man. We don't need to lose nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, credit to that kid. He's a fucking warrior for, oh, for wanting yeah. to go back out there. Um, and that's what I love about this game is yeah, the fact the that it, it, it's it's passion and it's it's like a warrior. You know what I mean? You cannot yeah. get that out of any other sport. I don't care yeah. what you know. No, they fake it to get out in the other sports. <laughs> Exactly. So uh, it's definitely one of the reasons why I found fell in love with it and uh, why I continue to be such a, a good uh, supporter, especially of the amateurs. Right. Because you guys typically wouldn't get uh, interviews or, you know, yeah. some FaceTime or whatever. You know what I mean? So I love giving you guys the support that you guys need to, you know, get your propel yourselves to the next level. So what is the next level for you? Uh, you know, hopefully we're going to fight my goals like six times this year, uh, whether it be kickboxing or MMA. So this is round one. Uh, we might be doing a rematch with uh, Manjapilly next. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, you know, there's a little spatter online. Uh, he took offense to and, you know, you know, it is what it is. I wouldn't mind seeing that one again. Uh, that oh, yeah. one that, uh, that uh, you know, was talking about your striking for sure. What you doing, girl? Come on. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, you know, so that was one of the guys that definitely respects your striking. And I'm sure it comes from a place of, you know what, that guy's a really good striker. Maybe the next time I stand up with him, because I know that that fight was a lot of takedowns. <laughs> yeah. And he's a stud wrestler. I'll give him that. He's, he's, yeah. he's a good wrestler. You know what I mean? So and you got to do what you got to do to win. I don't care who you are. Yeah. 100%. You know what I mean? So uh, definitely some respect there, but I wouldn't mind seeing that one again. Really, all the guys that you fought, I don't think I would mind seeing you run it back with yeah. those guys. The thing is, would they take the rematch? <laughs> <laughs> right? But I also know that 35 is ever evolving, and uh, I don't think you have trouble making the weight. So there's all these new fighters that are coming up that are, you know, really great strikers as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 35ers ain't built the way they used to be. 35ers yeah. used to be five foot six, you know what I mean? And now they're, you know, five ten, six foot. So how yeah. tall are you, by the way? Uh, about six foot. Yeah, see, exactly. They don't build them yeah. like they used to. You know <laughs> what I mean? Putting in that milk, huh? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's definitely cool to see like the sport growing and and people or fighters, I should say, not people, but fighters, uh, finding a way to you know, make it work for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. hundred percent. You know, so, and it's like, you know, anybody fighting, you know, with the weight, like at 150, and people always ask me, why do you cut? Why do you cut weight? You know, it's uh, fighting a 200 pound man at 150, you know, it's, a, it's another world. It, it definitely is. Um, so do you think that your, your career stays at 35? Um, when I go pro, I might uh, try 25. Uh, just because I don't cut a lot of weight and I think I can make it. Uh, but as an amateur, I would definitely 35 or 45. Okay. Well, uh, little known fact, flyweight's my favorite division. So I'm oh, sure yeah. you're somewhere, you know what I mean? So Quick. can't wait for this guy to go pro, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, well, going to the top, you know, just, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, yellow brick road of, uh, maze up there. Right. All right, so everybody that comes on this show has got to answer this question. You are no different. On April, not August, on April 22nd, when the ref raises your hand and Dave Velvet announces you the winner, I want to know how you were going to celebrate with your victory meal. Oh, victory meal. Honestly, the first victory meal comes after that way, and I'll be honest with you. But uh, honestly, uh, whew, victory meal. All right, if I had to pick, I'd be going to uh, Sarah Gaucha's uh, Brazilian Steakhouse and be going ham on all that steak. Mm. That you know, I've heard such good things about that steakhouse. 
It's ridiculous. Hey, I can go. Before I start my weight cut, that is a requirement every single time. And well worth it. 100%. It's, uh, like I said, I hear so many good things about this steakhouse. I, I, I just need to get my ass out there. Yeah, yeah well, well worth it, my man. I assure you. you make sure you come hungry. <laughs> uh, not a problem. Yeah. Always hungry. <laughs> there you go. Done. All right, my man. Well, I appreciate the time. I always look forward to watching you fight, um, uh, especially with uh, Abernathy being more of a stand-up guy. Maybe we'll get to see more of your guys' stand-up. So uh, I think the fans win either way for sure. Yes, um, but before I do let you go, uh, is there anybody you'd like to thank? Coaches, training partners, sponsors? Go ahead, take the floor. Yeah, 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 man. Thank uh, everybody at uh, Baker's MMA. Uh, they really hold me down. Uh, it's, you know, that's family right there. Uh my family for supporting me through all of this um work work is great you know i i love what i do i bartend at uh, hash kitchen and sicilian butcher and uh the staff you know they they understand my mma career they see me coming in with black eyes every other month you know it's, they, they they get the process too and you know they they support me and they come out they show up to the shows things like that so you know thank you That's to everybody awesome. everybody in my corner that's awesome, man. See, when the co-workers come out, that's dope. That yeah, is dope. Yeah, man, it's awesome, yeah. Celebrate with a beer with them after, win or lose, you know. I, I know I put on a show for them. Well, that's super dope. That's super dope. Again, April 22nd at the Celebrity Theater in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. You got Quick versus Abernathy at 135 pounds. Should be fight of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Should be fight of the night. I am looking forward to it. I cannot wait to see you there. Before I let you go, is there anything you'd like to get out into the universe? Uh, no. All good, my man. Thank you so much for having me. Honestly, this was super fun. Uh, made me feel like a celebrity. <laughs> Well, like I said, today, head kick audio, tomorrow, ESPN. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, first step. You were there first, my man. Appreciate you. All right, my man. Until next time. <laughs>